Hey everyone, Sarah here with SewingPartsOnline.com and today I think it's time to jump into alterations now that you have a little sewing experience underneath your belt. Here's the reason why. Knowing how to do alterations is going to make your friends and family happy because they're going to come to you to fix their clothes. Two, you can make a little money doing it. And three, you can take cheaper store-bought clothing, improve the fit, and make it look like a hundred bucks. So let's start with learning how to shorten pant hems. And we're gonna go ahead and jump in and learn some darning techniques. Let's do some darning, AKA free motion sewing. We're calling it darning because darning is kind of specific to patching up clothing. So I'm patching up a hole in some work jeans. I'm going to teach you the easiest way that I know how to darn, but there is a whole sect of sewing dedicated to restoring old jeans. I mean, these people do amazing work and have perfected methods so you would never even be able to tell there was a rip or a hole. Anywho, we need to find some jean material from which to cut a patch. The patch should be larger than the hole that we are darning and you can trim it back later. And try to find a color that is as close to your jean as possible, but if you can't find an exact match, it's really no big deal. So this hole is very frayed, but it won't matter when we are finished, so don't worry about cutting those. Turn the jeans inside out. We are going to hand baste by zigzagging across this hole to approximate those edges. Because when darning, you're doing a lot of movement on the machine, so it's best to just make sure those flaps are held in place. Using basting spray, attach the patch on the wrong side of the garment. I also recommend hand basting this patch in place just as a little extra securing measure. And pop on your darning plate. The manual for this machine says we can darn by just using the needle, no presser foot needed, but that makes me a little uncomfortable. So I'm going to use a darning foot. This one's called the big foot, which we do have an instructional video on how to use. So to darn, we need to think of sewing like a grid. We're basically going to sew back and forth with our lines as close together as we can, then sew up and down, intersecting all the previous stitches as close together as we can. For me, eventually I get bored and I'm just like, meh, let's just get this thing covered and pretty much just sew in every direction. Now you can really see my thread because it's not the right color for this jean. It's a little too blue, but if you match up your thread and focus on that grid sewing technique, your stitches will blend in very well. When you're finished, you can just trim the excess fabric off with some pinking shears and apply some fray check. Now, if you want to have a little bit more fun and play a prank on your significant other, I suggest tacking down the pockets. You are definitely going to be asked to hem some pants now that you sew, and you'll probably want to hem your own to save money at the tailors. Now you can finish the hem any way you wish. We learned a ton of different techniques on how to finish hems in episode six, like blind hems, face hems, etc. The technique we are emphasizing today is how to shorten ready-made pants. An important thing to remember is to wear the shoes while fitting the hem that you are going to be wearing when you actually wear the pants. Also, while doing this, make sure your client or friend or family or whatever is standing tall. So let's go over how I hemmed these Boy Scout pants. With pants that are really long, we can easily cut off a good portion of the pant to make it easier to turn up the hem. Cut all the way around, it doesn't have to be exact, and save those scraps just in case. Adjust the cuff so that it falls nicely. Where the hem falls really depends on what you want, but there are some universal guidelines. The pant can either fall a half an inch above the rubber sole of the shoe or as high as just grazing the very top front of the shoe. Try to stay within that zone. I like a longer hem because I don't like to risk socks being seen when sitting. Also for kids, I get a little more growth room. For a longer length, I want a neat horizontal fold in the front. There should be no puddling or pulling off to the side and definitely no more than one of those horizontal folds. Also, try to keep the pant side seams matched up when you're folding the fabric. That'll prevent the fabric from shifting on the bias. You don't need many pins because we are going to create a hem line with an iron. So this is all about eyeballing. You can measure every bit if you want, but it really isn't necessary at this point. So that is one side, do the other side and we will take them to the iron and set the crease. So I use the crease as my quote unquote marking tool. So I like to use a lot of starch, I like to use Best Press, 
Now I'll mark my hem by following that nice crease with a marking tool like my disappearing ink. Now turn the fabric up and under along that line that you drew. Finger press the fabric by pinching your fingers together. So this is what it looks like when it's completely turned under. Now I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch from the edge. I find a slightly longer stitch length is nice when I'm finishing a hem. Your stitch length will be a little longer than a construction stitch, but shorter than a basting stitch, like three to 3.5 millimeters is fine. Turn the pant leg inside out. Use your seam gauge to mark one inch above the folded edge. Now we're going to cut along that marked line. Fold the fabric in place so that the raw edge butts up against that quarter inch seam we sewed earlier. Pin and press. Now we're going to sew an edge stitch along this fold. Remember to watch the fold of the fabric, not the needle as you're sewing. Press the hem and repeat on the other pant leg. Alrighty, all finished. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to visit us on sewingpartsonline.com or come and hang out with our little sewing community on facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, Twitter at sewingparts, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest, we're everywhere. And be sure to subscribe by hitting that button below for next week's sewing video.